What up, watch peeps? As enthusiasts, our tastes evolve. And if you're a flipper, then your collection will likely follow suit. And in keeping with trends, I've noticed my collection has slid into smaller and maybe even more plain watches, which has left a gaping hole where the samurais and the sumos and the tunas used to be. That is to say, the big, bold, and likely colorful watches. Because I still want to wear these watches. Well, fear not, there are brands still making them, and Van Banner is one of them. So let's get into it. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. Wrist check. I am wearing the Doxa Sub 300T. You know, ever since I put it on this watch gecko bracelet, I noticed I've been wearing it a little more than I used to. I've always loved this watch, but I get along with it even better now on this bracelet. But we're here today to check out a Van Banner. It comes in a really cool tin this time with a pseudo wax seal on top. Pretty cool. You get your polishing cloth, which seems to be standard fare these days. Pretty sweet, but we're trying to get to what's underneath this big bad boy. Now, I opted for the gray dial LEA. And these are just big pilot diver style watches. You know, back to the old days of the over-engineered big bold watches. I love it. Now the colors, there are six different variants of this watch using three different dials. And you know, while my gray may seem a little restrained, there are big, bold red and purple dials as well. I'll put a link in the description so you can go check out all the different watches. Size, like I mentioned, these are unapologetically big, bad, busy 45 millimeter watches. Price, I think Van Banner knows that these watches are novelties, and I think it's quite intentionally so. This is not your everyday, under the cuff kind of thing, and they are priced accordingly and so well for what you get. $222.76 US, and it is so worth that. Now, I opted for this gray dial. I love the gray and blue color scheme, but I also really like the way this gray matches up to the distressed PVD case. I think that's just kind of really cool, very cohesive. If you want to take a closer look at the dial, you'll see we have multiple textures going on here, starting with this kind of flat, slightly textured intersection where the logo is and the text down at six o'clock. Then next we have this outer section, which has a sun ray finish, and it is a sandwich dial, so it has sandwich cutouts for the hour markers to show through. And in this case, they're pilot style numerals with a triangle at 12 o'clock, and I think this pilot style dial really contributes to this watch making sense at 45 millimeters, as pilot watches were historically large. Now, we also have uh, extended cutout date window down here at six o'clock that lies in that outer sector. Outside of this lies the minute track, which just you can see from a distance that it has a ton of loom and it has applied markers done in blue to match the hands. And you know, this busy dial is one of the few things that make this watch wear smaller. And I'll point out some of those others as we go on. The hands are big old pilot swords done in matte blue to match those hour markers. And I think it looks awesome. And it serves to remind you that watches are supposed to be fun. You don't have to take them all so seriously. All that sits under a very nice flat sapphire crystal that is slightly raised from the bezel. The bezel itself has a coin edge grip and you'll see it slightly slopes up to meet that sapphire crystal. It is a one piece bezel that's not an insert, but it is distressed like the case and it is loomed as well. It has a really nice grip to it and the action is typical Van Banner and that is to say awesome. It is chunky and clicky and it just feels like you would expect a big tool watch bezel to feel. I think it has maybe the slightest bounce back after each click, but it kind of settles in real solid. And it's, I would say, medium to tight, leaning towards the tight side as far as the resistance goes, which is just about right where I like it. The case itself is very unique. And, you know, I have to admit, it took me a while to understand it because at 45 millimeters, 
case design becomes super important. Everything is a little bigger, a little more visible, you know, swollen, if you will. So all these kind of flat planes and corners help to cut out mass that otherwise would make this wear way too big if it was all organic curves. Kind of think about how bubbly the SKX case wears being all curved. Also, the edges and corners create details that, again, using busyness to make the watch feel like it wears smaller when you have it on wrist. Obviously, it is all done in this kind of distressed PVD finish because you know, why not? <laughs> the distressed is one of the things I actually really like. Very early on in my watch collecting days, I came across a black CWC, the RN, and it was all worn off around the edges on the black, and I thought that just looked so cool. I've never been able to recreate that look on my own, but they've done it very well here. It just looks super badass. And again, that black case, the black cases tend to wear smaller than stainless steel cases would. Keeping with the more is more design, you see we have a name plate screwed on to the side at nine o'clock. And then on the three o'clock side, we have a big old 7.8 millimeter crown that is signed and also loomed as well. And it is one of the smoothest and easiest to use crowns that I have maybe ever experienced. Flipping it over to look at the case back, you'll see once again, they have made use of a display case back with red text around the outside. And you do have a logo kind of covering up the rotor screw. This one covers up a lot less real estate than the uh, parking master did for those of you who want a better view into the movement. It comes with two straps. My preferred one is this leather you'll see on here with the quick release spring bars. It has 24 millimeter lug with so it's going to use a big old panerai style strap and i think this one is very nice it really suits the watch it's thick but it's a really nice soft smooth leather i like the finishing i like the stitching the other strap it came with is a pvd mesh which i think is awesome it's wild it's more on top of more but i'm also of a mind to attempt to distress this myself because i think it would look super cool if it was distressed just like the case is. But um, like I said, I've tried to do that before and I've not had much success. What I really like it on is a blue rubber strap, which uh, when we check it out on wrist, I'll show you how it looks on that as well. Okay, Van Banner, I see you. <laughs> This one seems to have settled in at about plus three seconds a day. It just doesn't get much better than that. Amplitude 255, um, that's pretty typical for a Seiko. They don't usually run as hot as their Swift, Swiss equivalents, but you'll see it has zero beat error, which contributes to this perfectly clean trace, almost looking like a single line. This one is an absolute great runner for a Seiko NH35, for anything for that matter. Going over the dimensions, we have a 45 millimeter case, and that is at both the bezel and the case. As you'll see, they sit very flush right there, not counting this uh, name plate at nine o'clock. The lug to lug comes in at 52.2 millimeters, quite long, but there's a nice turn down to these lugs that'll help with some of that. It measures 14.2 millimeters thick, and it has a 24 millimeter lug width, may be a point of contention for some people as not many of us have 24 millimeter straps lying around. Now going over some of the other specs, we have a nice flat sapphire crystal just slightly raised from the bezel. It uses all the loom in the world. <laughs> Seriously though, it does have an awesome combination of C3 and BGW9, which we'll take a look at. It's running the Seiko NH35 movement, which is date only, and it has a whopping 300 meters of water resistance. And on the OEM leather strap here, it came in at 121 grams. And here is how it wears on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. You know, I mentioned it's an unapologetically big watch and it is intentionally so, but I think it wears better than its numbers would make you think. And I think my wrist really supports this size without much problem at all. I mentioned how much I liked wearing this on a blue rubber strap. In this case, we have the Barton's uh, Flatwater Elite Silicon. I just love the way it changes the look. It pulls the blue out of those markers in the hands and just gives it a slightly more fun look. 
Here it is alongside the Doxa Sub 300T at 42 and a half millimeters. And I think the size is about what you'd expect. It's a couple millimeters bigger. It has a larger dial opening, but it's not shockingly larger compared to something like this Doxa. Next up, I have the Van Banner Parking Master. If you happen to own one of these and you were wondering how it would look in comparison, Again, the Van Banner Parking Master, probably pretty similar to the Doxa in wearing experience, and the difference in size here, I think, is about the same as well. Lastly, I have the Ultimate Benchmark, the Seiko SKX, also 42 and a half millimeters. And again, you see that about two millimeter difference in every way. But here I think you can see this kind of bubble shape of the SKX and how it makes it wear larger, whereas this kind of cut out you know flat planes and corners case makes this case wear a little smaller than you would expect all right lastly let's check out what we've all been waiting for the loom keep the loom my eyes my eyes <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, there is nothing like coming in from the sun into like a slightly dark room while wearing a Van Banner. It just lights up and screams. Look at me. You can see you got kind of some blue on the bezel here. You got, look at that mini track. It's just so much loom in there and big thick amount of loom on the hands and in the dial numbers as well. Just all very consistent and really fun to look at. So there you go, the Van Banner LEA. You know, Van Banner is the undisputed king of making watches that I didn't know I needed. Seriously though, there I am just scrolling through watches, minding my own business, and along comes Van Banner. 45 millimeter pilot diver with 300 meters water resistance. You might be right. <laughs> Seriously though, it is a big, Fun watch, and my Van Banners come out every weekend. All right, before I let you guys go, sneaker check. I'm wearing my Jordan 1 Lowe's, the SEs, and that's it. I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, please like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.